in, uh, in the book of Exodus. Tonight we're going to do a bit of a survey through Exodus. Uh, please uh, remember uh, uh, Miles and Carolyn Plowden. They're our newest members uh, that we talked about this morning. They're on your prayer list. Their names are at the very bottom under the shut-in category. And so keep them in your prayers this week, if you would. And I know some of have asked about uh, where they live and how they can go visit them. So if you're able to do that, please uh, please do so. Uh, I'm planning on taking by a bulletin and a uh, uh, prayer list uh, to them and dropping that off so they will uh, at least kind of know what's going on. They can pray for us because Carolyn asked, uh, she asked us, what can we do for, for the church? And their son is. I said, well, you can pray. Amen. Uh, if you can't do anything else, you can always what? You can always pray, and of course, uh, uh, so we we anticipate that that would happen. Uh, these folks, they love the Lord, and uh, so they'll uh, hopefully they'll be able to come and attend soon uh, uh, some of our services. All right, uh, but we're going to be in the Book of Exodus. So uh, we'll call this study out of Africa, as the children of, of Israel, God brought them out of uh, Egypt and uh, brought them in to uh, well, He was heading them to the Promised Land. They didn't quite make it in Exodus, did they? They got kind of stuck out in the uh, in the wilderness, uh, but uh, but it, it leads us to uh, the, the, where they come out of the land and go into uh, to, out to Mount Sinai. And so uh, it's a great book of the Bible to study. There's so much so much good stuff yeah. in this book. Let's begin reading at verse number one of Exodus chapter one uh, this evening. And uh, here, here's what it says. Now these are the names of who the children of Israel. Okay. Uh, wow, is he going to give us all their names? <laughs> well, he's going to give us some of the names. And, and the names he's going to give us here are going to be the names of what? Of the sons of, of who? Jacob. Jacob, the sons of Jacob. Uh, his name was changed to Israel. And so, but these are his sons. These are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob. Uh, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Issachar, Zebulon, uh, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher, and all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. So that's the introduction to the book of Exodus, and uh, as you can see, it's a story of a family. How many of you have a family? Anybody here have a family? All right. If you didn't raise your hand, we're going to pray for you, okay? You're, we're worried about where you came from, but uh, uh, all right. But, you know, we all have a family, and Jacob had a family of 12 sons, and it was his descendants that were brought to, by Joseph, as you recall. Uh, uh, he went and got his, his father. Uh, he sent the wagons to find to get his father and bring the family back to Egypt uh, where he could take care of them and watch over them and, and help them during the famine. And it's now that they find themselves in, in Egypt. And according to verse 7, what happens while they're in Egypt here? They were, they were fruitful, verse 7, and increased abundantly. So now they go from 70 to how many? Uh, well, by the time they leave, we believe there were at least two and a half million Jewish people that came out of Egypt, out of Africa, uh, in the Exodus. And so uh, that, I would say that's a good multiplication, huh? <laughs> From 70 to two and a half million. And they waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. Father, bless the word of God tonight as we study and uh, as we look into some, some uh uh, the points here that we want to look at during the this time in our study in Exodus, Lord. Thank you for this great uh, book of the Bible. And Lord, uh, I, I thank you for how it's impacted my life in many ways. And bless it tonight, may it impact the lives of our people. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, when I was a, a boy, um, I, I'd gotten a Bible through uh, uh, a Sunday school uh, bus contest. And um, uh, we had a bus that came by from the Drew Park Baptist Temple, and uh, in fact, my, our pastor lived in our neighborhood, so uh, the bus would come by uh, and it'd pick up kids and all over town, pretty much all over, or you know, the west side of Tampa, the north side of Tampa, and uh, and so uh, I, I, they had a contest going on. If you came 
uh, I forget how many, it was probably like 10 weeks wow. or 12 weeks in a row, 12 Sundays in a row, you would win a free Bible. And somehow I managed to do that. I, I have no idea how that happened, except I just wanted to get that Bible. I don't know how I was, maybe eight, nine, ten years old, perhaps. I wasn't even saved. I, I didn't even know the Lord, but I wanted a what? I wanted a Bible. And, uh, and so uh, I went to, went to Sunday school for those 12 weeks, got my Bible, and didn't go back. Isn't that the way it works <laughs> sometimes? Okay. And, uh, but, uh, and, and I got that Bible home, and my dad had built uh, into my, our bedroom, a, um, he had built in our beds. My brother and I shared a room together, a little three-bedroom, one-bath house in, uh, on Havana Avenue in Tampa. And uh, he had built in uh, our beds against the wall, you know, it, taking some wood and, and uh, just built them in. We didn't have bed frames. We just had a built-in bed, but he had built drawers under our, uh, under our bed. So I had these two pretty good-sized drawers under my bed where I kept all my important stuff, right? Like baseball cards yeah. and things. Uh, and so uh, uh, I don't remember what else I had in there, but I did. That's where I kept my Bible at. It was a blue Bible. And... Uh, and so every once in a while, especially, and this is, you know, especially when I was feeling kind of down or maybe a little, you know, lonely or upset or whatever, I would reach down, pull out the drawer, get my Bible out, sit on my bed, lean it up against the wall, and open the Bible. And the only place I knew where to even find anything in the Bible, for some reason, was Exodus, the book of Exodus, uh, the Ten Commandments. And so I would open, find, you know, I had, maybe I had it marked, must have had it marked, because otherwise I would have never found it. So I didn't know anything about the books of the Bible, really. And so but I would open up, I would read uh, ex, uh, the, the Ten Commandments out of Exodus chapter 20. And, uh, and honestly, I mean, as, as an unsaved kid, I, I felt better after I read God's Word. Isn't that strange? I hope that happens to you sometimes, right? You feel better when you, when you read the Word of God. And so, uh, and God would, you know, it seemed like God would speak to me in some ways. I mean, not audibly or anything, but, but I felt drawn to this particular book. I, I wished I would, uh, had gone to Sunday school more than I was able to or did as a child. But, uh, but God had it impressed upon me in this particular book. And we're going to call this out of Africa, the book of Exodus. Uh, uh, here's what one uh, commentator says, just as an introduction to the book tonight. He says, by the time we have read through uh, Exodus. Uh, how many chapters are there, by the way? How many chapters in Exodus? 40, that's right, 40 chapters. So after you've read all 40 chapters of the book of Exodus, he said, you would have learned the basic vocabulary of the gospel. Words like blood, redeem, sacrifice, law, glory, and Passover are all here. Part of the great drama in which God saves a people for himself. And so this is a book, uh, the second book of the Bible, and it, uh, it goes on to say, uh, to study Exodus, therefore, is to come to the heart of the message of redemption, to see God as the Savior of his people, caring for them and, and present with them as they journey from Egypt to Canaan, from the house of bondage to where? The land of promise. So they're all going to be on a journey. They're going to want to leave Egypt. They're going to get out of Egypt and, and go to where God has for them. So let's think about the importance of the book of Exodus. Well, the Exodus experience is to the Old Testament what, uh, uh, what the cross is to the New Testament, or in the New Testament is to us Christians. I mean, this is a, this is a book that's, that's held in high esteem by the Jewish people because it's their story. It's the story of their redemption as a nation, the, the beginnings of, of, uh, of it, as they come together. Remember I said they were a family. When they leave Egypt, they're a nation. They're, they're a group of people. They're, they're, they're a large group of people, and they have their own identity at that point. Uh, and so uh, uh, it's, it's a very important book uh, to understand. The Exodus is the climatic event of ancient Hebrew history. I mean, it's the thing they look back to the most. It is God acting to deliver his people from this, this bondage that they've been in. And by the way, they ended up staying there how many years? 400 years. 430. 430 years, the New Testament says, in Egypt. is how long they were there in bondage before they were brought out. Likewise, 
as the cross is the central event of Christian history and the resurrection, right? We know that. When God acted to deliver humanity from the bondage of sin. So it's a very important book to study. Uh, the book of Exodus develops some of the major themes of the Bible. We'll find as we study through this, uh, it'll develop themes like redemption. It'll develop uh, uh, themes of salvation, of, of worship. Uh, there's, there's a lot of worship that's going to go on in the book. There's the law is given here in the book of Exodus. Uh, uh, the covenant is established with the nation of Israel. In this book, the priesthood comes into being uh, that's going to last uh, for generations for the Jewish people. So all these things, these important themes are in the Bible. By the way, God hasn't, isn't done with the priesthood, is he? Right. He's made us priest. Right. We have that right. And, uh, and Jesus is a priest forever. Uh, the Bible says after the order of Melchizedek. But uh, the Exodus adventure has been called a parallel of Christian experience because it covers these great subjects like uh, uh, we were in bondage to what? To sin, right? We are in bondage to sin and God delivered us out of that sin. Uh, but also, uh, I don't know about you, but in, in sometimes uh, in our Christian experience we wonder. I didn't say wonder, but we wander, right? We're, we're kind of meandering around. We're not really going anyplace. And so it, it kind of deals with that a little bit uh, here in Exodus and some of the other books of Moses. And then it, it, it teaches us about divine provision of how God, uh, you know, can, can bring things through. Now, what's the name of the book? Exodus. Called Exodus. Uh, that's not the original name of this book. Look at verse 1 with me if you still got your Bibles open. This is the original name of the book. It's in verse 1, the first 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 words. Here it is. Originally, the, the title of the book was, and these are the names. It was simply that, that Hebrew phrase that would say, these are the names. That's, that's what they called the book of Exodus at first. Uh, later on, it was changed to Exodus, which means a road out or a departure uh, if, uh, from, from the land of Egypt. It was taken from Exodus 19 and verse 1. So if you've got your Bible, look at Exodus 19 and verse number 1. We'll see uh, this, this phrase that uh, from which we get the word Exodus. Thank you. Exodus 19, verse 1. Who will read that for us? In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came that they lay into the wilderness of Sinai. Okay. Uh, notice that little phrase, and when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt. That that's the word exodus, or we would what we call exodus. They they exited, they they got out, they went forth out of the land. So it comes from that particular verse, the title to this particular book. Therefore, the, the title describes the very central event of the book, right? The departure of these these people, this group of people, this nation, out of uh, uh, from the land of Egypt where they had been in bondage. Who, who wrote the book? Oh, no, God did. God used Moses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So first of all, uh, we, we, you know, we say God wrote the book. But secondly, humanly speaking, uh, a man named Moses, one of the great men of the Bible, right? Uh, and uh, the, he's, he's, he's through and through uh, in this book. It's, it's a lot about Moses uh, as well as the children of Israel. Uh, now, now, if you want to check that, or, you know, if you don't, some people don't believe, some scholars don't believe Moses wrote the book for whatever reason. Uh, and and for, for that, they, uh, they make up all kinds of other people and whatever. But uh, Jesus himself believed that Moses wrote the book, so that's good enough for me, right? Okay. And you can find that in the New Testament, uh, John and, and Mark, uh, where he quotes uh, uh, things and says they were from, from uh, Moses. There. And, and, of course, Moses was, of all men, he was qualified and, and had the background and the training to be the author. Why is that? What happened with Moses? Yeah, he grew up in Egypt. I mean, that's where he was born. He grew up there. Uh, he was, uh, you know, he, he was given up for adoption, so to speak, to Pharaoh's daughter. Picked him up out of the, uh, out of the bull rushes and and took him back to the palace and raised him as her own son. And there he was treated as a prince. And he was learned in all the ways of the Egyptians. So he was the most educated of all of the people of, of, of the Jewish people 
at that time. He, he knew more. He, I mean, he had more knowledge. He had more education. Uh, and, and certainly, he would have been the one, if anyone was going to write the story uh, of redemption. And he, by the way, was an eyewitness to it. You always want to get the eyewitness account if you can, right? Uh, not someone else, what they said. But uh, he was definitely qualified for that. An eyewitness and and uh, or he knew the eyewitnesses uh, to the accounts that are reported in uh, Exodus. By the way, he wrote Genesis and Leviticus and Deuteronomy and Numbers as well. And so five books of the Bible written by uh, Moses. Uh, the date of the book, uh, we'll place that date about 1447 B.C. Does that mean anything? <laughs> uh, approximately 1450 years before Christ uh, is when... The book was uh, was written, uh, and uh, beginning at Moses and the prophets, though Jesus said they spoke of me. So, so even as long before, uh, 1450 years before, when Moses wrote, uh, some of the things he wrote were about Jesus. When we get to the tabernacle, yeah. you know, the tabernacle speaks all of it speaks about Jesus, our Savior. Right. There's ty typology throughout. The book. Uh, obviously, he's our redeemer. He's the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. But he was also remember when they go out of Egypt, they they mark the blood the blood on their doorpost, and a lamb is slain so they can be delivered. And so, uh, obviously, it's a book about Christ. There are five major themes in this book: God's covenant uh, uh, promise to to uh, to Israel is given here in the book of Exodus. Uh, so we'll see, uh, you know, God, when God makes a covenant, does he keep it? Yeah. yeah, God always keeps his covenant with his people. And back in Genesis, he had made covenants with, with Jacob and with Israel, uh, the same ones. And so he, they, he keeps these promises through this book uh, to the people. Uh, there was redemption for bondage, you'll see, is a great theme in the book of Exodus as we study through it. They, the giving of the law. And again, you come to that chapter 20, that great event where they're at Mount Sinai and, and Moses comes down from the mountain and what has he got in his hands? Yeah, two, two tablets of stone that God wrote himself with his finger. <laughs> he just scribbled it out, right? And wrote out the commandments for them so they'd have them. And so the giving of the law we'll find uh, here in the book of, uh, of Exodus. And then the, the establishment of the creation of the priesthood is found uh, uh, near the end of the book as uh, uh, the garments are described that the priests are going to wear and, and uh, the, the form of ceremonies and so forth. Many of those are given. And then the building of the tabernacle is found here in this book. So these are the themes that you'll find or will find as we study through this particular book. Now let's let me give you a quick outline here. It's just three points to this outline of the book of Exodus. You want to break it down. You want to look at it. Uh, from a, uh, a, a higher view. Uh, the first section, uh, which runs from chapter 1 all the way through chapter 12, is uh, subjection. We're going to find these people that, according to verse 7, were fruitful and, and increased abundantly and multiplied and, and, were, and became very mighty before, and when you get to the next verse, you'll find out that trouble begins. The, Jew, uh, the is, Egyptian pharaoh is threatened by this group of people. So he puts them under bondage, he makes them slaves. That's what he does. And for those next uh, 400 years, they're going to be in slavery. They're going to be put down and pushed down and pushed around and beat on and, and treated uh, terribly. They're going to be in subjection in the land of Egypt for those years. Secondly, we'll find, uh, though emancipation would be the second uh, set of uh, of, of chapters there from chapter 12, or third, or chapter 12, part of that, that, all the way to chapter 18, as they, uh, they journey out of Egypt and uh, into uh, uh, the Sinai Peninsula and uh, to Mount Sinai. And then the third part of the book, and this is the important part, is right, right? Revelation. You'll find there's some great revelation given to Israel at Sinai. There's instructions given to them how to live. God, what God expects from them, what, how they're to treat one another. And, and so there's, uh, there's laws given, there's uh, commandments given for them to instruct them on how they, as the people of God, are to live out their life. So subjection and emancipation <clears throat> and revelation are the three main parts of the book of Exodus. 
Now, just uh, some comments about the book of Exodus that we want to just think about tonight. The best introduction to the book of Exodus is the book of Genesis. Why is that? Because this is the continuation of the story, right? Because uh, uh, we read about a family, and well, who in the world are they? Well, you have to know the book of Genesis, but um, Jacob is, right? And, and who his sons are, and so forth. You're introduced to them in the previous book of the Bible, the first book of the Bible. And, uh, and, and in Genesis, uh, you, you'll find it's not only a story of, of a family, but it's a story of creation, obviously. There's Adam, and then from Adam you go to uh, the next main big character is Noah, and then from him to Abraham, and from him to Isaac, and from him to Jacob, and from Jacob to Joseph. And so when the last, uh, uh, what, 13 uh, chapters of Genesis deal with the story of Joseph, who has been taken uh, captive and went down to Egypt. And there he rises to the, being the prime minister of, of the country. And uh, then he brings his family back to Egypt. And so that's how they arrive there. That's how they get there is through uh, these, these men that are talked about in the book of Genesis. So the story of Joseph uh, sets the stage for what follows here in the book of Exodus. Further on, the first chapter of Exodus is not the beginning then of a new story, but it's a continuation of a story that had already started, that already began. So this is the sequel. You, you, ever, you ever notice how that... that how, how the movie makers do things these days. So so you have a movie. Give me a movie that has a sequel. Star Wars. Star Wars. Okay. So, so they had the first Star Wars movie. Now I have to admit this. I'm really not a Star Wars fan. Amen, brother. I, I, don't, I couldn't care less about Star Wars. I don't like those I know. guys. Some of you may be. And, uh, we had a good friend who, he was a Star Wars collector. You know, and, had all these little Star Wars statues, and, you know, of all the different things or people or whatever they are, uh, uh, you know, in his office and whatever. And it was so caught up, and I couldn't wait for the next Star Wars movie to come out. And and so they had Star Wars, you know, uh, uh, the next chapter or whatever. What do they call it? Uh, uh, the Empire Strikes Back. Search for Spock. Huh? The next, you know, next year, right now. I mean, how many millions and billions of dollars are these people going to make off of one crazy story, right? Yeah, a lot. That's right. <laughs> My skin is uh, and, but, but it's a sequel, and so this is a sequel. It's the it's second installment of, of God, what God wants us to know, his revelation to us about this called out people uh, he had. Now, the third thing you need to know, of course, uh, is the outstanding character of Exodus is who? Moses. Moses. And so we'll spend a little time studying the life of Moses, I'm sure, as we go through uh, these chapters. We'll meet him uh, soon here in uh, chapter 1, 2, and 3 there for sure. Uh, so we'll find out about Moses. And uh, the key word of Exodus is going to be the word redemption. So we'll find that as we go along. And then uh, let's, let's look at the key verse. Two key verses. They're both together. They're in Exodus chapter 29. Now, if you study other people's uh, observations from Exodus, they may give you different key verses. That's okay. These are just mine. And uh, uh, I think they're important verses for a couple of reasons. Exodus 29. Man, when I read this, this just, this just gives me chill bumps. It's exciting to see what God has to say here in Exodus 29 and verse 45 and verse number 46. And here's what it says. God says, and I will dwell among the children of Israel and will be their God. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God that brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, that I may dwell among them I am the Lord, their God. Right? So we have a story here of, of deliverance from deliverance into the very presence of God. Just how God says, I, I, I'm going to be their God, but I'm also going to do what? I'm going to dwell among them. Does that excite you? That God would want to dwell among his people? <laughs> oh, did you know? When you got saved, God came to live within your heart. Amen. 
Amen. and the Holy Spirit. See, God is doing that right now. He's living among his people. He's living in your heart and in mine tonight. And so I, I believe these verses that talk about the Exodus there, how God brought them out, but also more important than that, something important, more important than them coming out is the fact that they, the Lord was their God. Uh, and he dwelled with, or was to dwell with them. Uh, so if you don't get anything else in this uh, message tonight, just, just think about that. How when the Holy Spirit came to your heart, he came to dwell within you. And that uh, now you're not your own. You've been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are the Lord's, right? You belong to him, right? And so he, of course, today we believe he's our God and our Lord as well. So just some comments there as we uh, look at uh, this view of uh, the book of Exodus over the next uh, few, I hate to say how long this is going to take. <laughs> 40 chapters is a long way to go, right? But, uh, but there's a lot of good stuff in here uh, that we'll find out as the Lord leads us. Uh, we won't be able to cover everything, I'm sure, but we'll, we'll try to cover some stuff that would be a blessing uh, to you as a believer and a follower of the Lord. I, I just believe God, you know, put some things in here in the Old Testament for us in the New Testament, right? right. These stories were written for our learning, for our admonition, that uh, we can uh, apply the lessons that God taught these people to our own lives. Father, today we thank you so much for your love and blessings to us. Uh, Lord, I, there's just a special thought, or a special place in my heart for the book of Exodus and for the Word of God. I thank you, Lord, that uh, uh, we, can, we can study this book that you wrote through your servant Moses. We can glean insights, and principles, and, and, and some things for our life that we really need, Lord. Uh, thank you for leading in this direction. Uh, I've been wanting to teach this book for a long time, Lord, and it just, it's always before you seem to say no, but I pray that you would use uh, these lessons that we're going to study, these, these messages we'll bring uh, to benefit uh, our people and to draw us into a closer walk with the one who loves us and gave himself for us. Now, bless, Lord, as we close the service with a verse of invitation. Lord, if there's a need in anyone's heart tonight, maybe they just want to come and pray for someone else tonight. And maybe there's a, an issue that uh, is going on in the family or you know, someone they know that's uh, that's in need of prayer tonight. Maybe just spend a few moments at the altar praying for that person, interceding for them, and asking you to come through for them this week, Lord, we pray. We pray for those that are sick for healing. We pray for those that need jobs, Lord, that that phone call would come, that that email would come that says you have a job, or that something would happen in their lives this week. Uh, Lord, we pray uh, for others that are uh, struggling and maybe financially, Lord, need your help and just ask you to help them meet their needs. Those that are struggling physically, Lord, and with pain and, and just uh, going through difficult times and cancer especially, Lord, we lift those folks up to you and ask you to touch their bodies and bring the comfort and the strength they need to get through day by day as they lean upon you. Bless this time of invitation. Now we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with us.